Thank you so much, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's great to see so many old friends. Um, at CODASIP, we love to start presentations with a quote, and since this is a security pitch, this is one of my favorite security quotes. There are two types of companies in the world, those that have been breached and know it, and those that have been preached and do not know it. Uh, Ted Schlein said this, but I've seen a lot of these types of quotes for the last 10 years, and I love them, especially because they make a very serious and increasingly serious problem kind of funny. All you have to do is look at almost any newspaper or any of the tech journals at any time, and you see how big of a problem we in the industry have and our customers. When I started in the security space a long time ago, it was really more of a defense type of problems and a few companies got hacked, but it really wasn't as prevalent as it is today. And I saw a lot of more no-name companies, but today, really big premier OEMs with infinite money and infinite number of resources are getting hacked, and they're getting hacked regularly. So we do have a huge problem. And when you look at the vulnerabilities um, that you see out there, this is not just increasing a little bit linearly. It's, it's geometrically increasing. It's been 14, 15 times over the last 20 years. So this problem right now with the technologies that we're using is not going away. It's getting to be big. And not only is it big, but it's incredibly expensive. You've probably all heard of Heartbleed, which was an SSL uh, flaw about 10, 12 years ago, right? It was very common. Estimates are over a half a billion in cost to deal with this one problem, just this one problem. And by the way, some of the estimates that I've seen by other people, it's a lot more. It's a real lot more. And when you look at this class of software, right, this kind of firmware type of stuff, just in the last few years, it's been increasing by 5x. Now, the interesting point is this particular type of problem, which was a buffer overflow, it's a memory problem. That represents about 70% of the CVEs, the, the uh, vulnerabilities and exposures that have been tracked. So 70%, I, I, I think most people, if you're not in the industry, don't know that. 70% of these problems are memory related. And guess what? It's been that way for decades, decades, right? About 70, 80% of the vulnerabilities that are out there are related to memory. Now you might ask, well, why? Why have we not been able for 20 years to solve this problem? And it's actually rather simple. Most of the software out there is C, I think conservatively a trillion lines of code, right, done over many years. And C is a great programming language, it's very flexible, but it doesn't have inherent memory protection. So it's almost impossible to guarantee it even when you're looking for it. And so that's why we have this problem. And by the way, you could say, well, maybe, just maybe, I could try to contain it and make sure that I don't have the problem. And let's assume you have the best team in the world. That's great, but most of this is not just you doing it in your teams, but other partners that are developing it for or open source. So this is almost an untractable problem, which is why the industry has been suffering from it for absolutely ever. But we, <laughs> at CODASIP think it's time for the OEMs to provide protection to the customers, and we are taking steps to help it, and that's what I'm going to give you a little bit of a peek at. So from my perspective, and here I'm just focusing on that 70, 80 percent of CVEs on memory, I could think of two obvious ways to fix it. One is you can rewrite everything in a more modern language like Rust that does provide the memory protection. That, that's something you could do that. What would you think about rewriting a trillion lines of code? I, I think it's economically unviable, right? It's probably decades and, right, a couple times the annual GDP of the U.S. It's just an incredible problem. It's, it's, it's intractable. 
Well, right, the other way to do it is you provide hardware that has built-in memory protection. And there has been that. For a long time, there's things like canaries. There's little ways in which you can try to statistically look at it. But there isn't, has been uh, commercially available a lot of ways to do it that are very detail-oriented to can stop it at all levels. But fortunately, there's an emerging standard called CHERRY. It stands, stands for Capability Hardware Enhanced Rich Instructions. Capabilities, if you haven't heard, it's, it's often used in the security space about certain properties attributed to something. In this case, all it is is smart pointers. <laughs> So the smart pointer has some metadata associated with which is the bounds and a valid bit to make sure that you're not screwing with it. And you can get very fine-grained memory protection and scalable compartmentalization. So it's absolutely the fastest, easiest way to do that, and you don't have to rewrite a trillion lines of code. In fact, if you design a processor with it, you can do it in a way that it's actually you can turn it off and on. So now, there is some work on the software side that you have to do. You have to recompile it, and especially if it's old code and you haven't used the best methods, you do have to rewrite something. But it's not like rewriting it in the language that you don't have a lot of resources or time to do. So it's a pretty slick way to do it. And fortunately, RISC-V, as you might expect, is a very knowledgeable group, and they're ahead of things. And there's actually a cherry SIG. And they're working today on a, a technical group to actually get specifications done for 32-bit and 64-bit variants of this. Now, I really have to give a shout out to two groups. The University of Cambridge, which has been working on this for, I think, about 10, 12 years. They were originally funded by UKRI and the DARPA to do this, and they work very closely with ARM, and ARM did fantastic work on their Morello platform, and it's really out there. A lot of people are using it. I've seen stuff It's really a cross-platform. It can be used any place. I've seen it with MIPS. I've seen it with Intel, so it's great. More recently, Microsoft did a very nice embedded controller that I think was called Chariot, and they're working with other people at low risk to, to make it more broadly available. So this is, it's been incubated. This is not something that's brand new. Really, really smart PhDs have worked on this, and they've improved it. By the way, I've heard some of my friends, I have a great friend, uh, professor at uh, Queens Belfast, and he said, oh, right, um, that I, I've worked on this a long time ago. It's not good. Then we sat down and had him talk to my security uh, architects. And at the end of it, he said, well, I guess this will work. So all right, if you haven't seen this before, it's, it's actually been greatly improved over the last decades. And it's um, something that we believe in CODASIP, it's going to be mainstream. And so what we've recently announced is a first commercial implementation of Cherry. So this is something that you're going to be able to buy. It's based on our A730 uh, uh, application processor platform. It's a really cool thing, a very cool thing. And guess what? It's actually running at our, um, our booth. So we'd like to welcome you to come to our booth and see it. Just to set some expectations, um, just to set some expectations, um, I, the, the security type of uh, demos are really cute, but people, so I'm not a security architect, I'm just a manager, but I've been around it. Normally they show it to you and you see a lot of hexadecimal numbers or 512 zeros or one and something happens and then the security architects applaud and people like me look at it and say, what just happened? Um, so, but fortunately for people like me and maybe for you, it's now in color. So when, when you should clap when the color changes and somebody will prompt you. So you won't feel embarrassed. You should go. It really does work, and it stops all of these types of problems. So thank you very much. Um, it's now our time to act. I hope some of you are interested and can join us at the booth and look at us. Thank you.